Okay, so once you've come back from monitoring out at the creek and you fix, fixed your dissolved oxygen bottles and you filled out the front of the data sheet and um, you're coming back indoors and you have your area all ready to start testing, we usually start with the dissolved oxygen test first. And so from your dissolved oxygen test kit, you're going to have your two fixed dissolved oxygen bottles. Within that, you're also going to have a square mixing bottle with no markings on it, and also a plastic measuring tube. And your two reagents are going to be the sodium thiosulfate and the starch indicator solution, so both liquids. So that's going to be your equipment that you're going to use. And we'll start off with one bottle first. And always remember your rinse procedures. So we always rinse with the deionized water bottle first, and please don't touch the bottle to any of the equipment. So we're going to rinse three times with deionized water, squirting on the inside of the equipment and emptying that into your liquid waste container. And then just shake off the extra liquid. You're going to do the exact same thing with your square mixing bottle as well. Rinse three times, and it does not take much liquid to rinse out your equipment. This is expensive water, but we also do want you to rinse with it thoroughly. And please do not put your thumb or fingers over any of the equipment bottles because the gloves also are not sterile. So you do not want to contaminate your equipment by your gloves. Okay. Then just start off with one dissolved oxygen bottle. Go ahead and twist and pull on the glass stopper. And then what you need to do is pour from the dissolved oxygen bottle into the plastic measuring tube and you want a reverse meniscus. So meniscus is going to be the natural curve down of the water. A reverse meniscus is going to be like a big bubble on top of the plastic measuring tube. So I usually hold my plastic measuring tube over the liquid waste, pour into the plastic measuring tube, and I usually over pour just so I can get that big bubble on top. Then you need to get all of that into the square mixing bottle. Best way I know how is to go ahead and touch the equipment together and then just kind of pour as a unit. Just like so. And then just kind of shake the tube to get whatever few drops might still be there. Then you're going to start with your starch indicator solution first. On these bottles, they are childproof, so you got to push down and twist. A little bit of instruction on using a dropper. Please always hold the dropper straight up and down. Any sort of an angle is going to be a different size drop that we don't really know what size that is. So always straight up and down. Make certain that your dropper is at least half full. As it gets pretty close to being empty, you don't really know if that's going to be a full drop or not. So make certain it's always half full. And then just add two drops of the starch indicator solution to your square mixing bottle. And I always screw the top back on just so it doesn't get knocked off. Then you're going to swirl your bottle so it's all completely one dark color. Then you're going to use the sodium thiosulfate, again childproof. And you're going to titrate with the sodium thiosulfate. Titration just means adding a drop of something, swirling in between, until you get a color change that stays. And our color change is going to be from this inky, dark, blue-black color until it's completely colorless. So that's going to be our end point, our stopping point. Keep count of your drops. So again, make certain your dropper is at least half full or so. Then I'm going to add a drop of the sodium thiosulfate, and then agitate, swirl the bottle until it's mixed. So that's one. Always keep count of your drops. That's two. That's three. So always make certain and thoroughly swirl in between each drop. That's four. As it gets close, it'll kind of go to a purplish color. It's drop number five. 
So drop number six, and there we go, completely colorless. So that would be six drops of sodium thiol sulfate. So this is where you would write down on your data sheet the, uh, for your first dissolved oxygen bottle, it took six drops, and there is no calculations for this uh, high range test. So this bottle has six milligrams per liter of oxygen in it. So then what you need to do, as I said in one of the earlier episodes, is we need to have repeatability. So you need to empty out the liquid in your square mixing bottle, rinse thoroughly again three times with deionized water, because we have our second bottle to test, that's going to be our repeatability. Just shake off the liquid. And you'll also need to rinse out your plastic measuring tube the same way. And then the first bottle I always put off to the side just in case we have to come back and retest. If we don't get the same results between the two bottles, then we have plenty of solution here from the first bottle to go back and retest. So again, we will twist and pull on the stopper here. And then pour from the dissolved oxygen bottle into the plastic measuring tube, always over the liquid waste container. So you have a reverse meniscus. And then get all of that into the square mixing bottle. And then again, two drops of the starch indicator solution. Straight up and down with the dropper. I'm making certain that the dropper is about half full. So, so two drops of the starch. And swirl or agitate so it's completely one dark color. Then we're going to titrate with the sodium thiol sulfate. Again, making certain the dropper is about half full. Straight up and down with the dropper. Going to add a drop, swirl, agitate for a few seconds. So that's our second drop. It's the third drop. It's our fourth drop. It's our fifth. See, and this is a very good case where it was nice to have a white paper towel down here because, you know, it's very close to clear, but there's still a little bit of blue in here. So we need to probably add about one more drop, which would be our sixth drop, swirl, and it is completely colorless. So we have gained repeatability. We had six drops of dissolved oxygen in our first sample, and we had six drops to make the change in our second bottle. So that is very good repeatability, the same answer. As far as the dissolved oxygen test, it's very important to be within at most two drops difference um, between the two dissolved oxygen bottles. Anything more than that, as I said, you have plenty of solution to go back and retest bottle number one and bottle number two. Maybe those second testings, you'll get repeatability. If not, if it's still more than two drops difference, you will need to go back out to the creek, refill both DO bottles, refill your sample water bottle, refill the front of the data sheet, and um, do it all over again.